queridos lectores de la revista Lemas, bienvenidos una vez más a nuestro canal en YouTube. Eh, tengo el gusto y el honor de estar con William Kuhn. William es un historiador, un biógrafo, un novelista eh, muy interesante, muy leído. Ha escrito la vida de Disraeli, por ejemplo, de la reina Isabel II. Pero en este caso nos convoca eh, un libro editado por Ediciones Camelot, extraordinariamente interesante, que se llama, eh, eh, que es la vida de Jackie Kennedy, Jackie Onassis, Jackie Asecas, um, como lectora. No es una biografía ortodoxa, sino la biografía de una lectora y de una editora. Así que voy a proceder a entrevistar a William. Hello, dear William. It's a pleasure to be with you. It's my pleasure to be with you. Well, I was uh, really fascinated by by your bio your biography of Jackie, uh, which is not your usual biography because it is this a uh, new aspect of your character of Jackie, who is uh, more than a wife, more than. Uh, someone's companion is a very thorough reader, also a sort of writer and a publisher. Mm -hmm. um, so the, these three aspects of, uh, I will call her just Jackie, not Jackie Kennedy, not Jackie Onassis, let's, let's just say Jackie, okay. um, uh, are very interesting. If you, if you like, we should begin by, well, she was a, She was a reader. She, she read a lot of books since uh, very early in her age. And then she became or wanted to become a writer and then, of course, a publisher. Can you tell us a little bit about your investigation and these aspects of Jackie, beginning with uh, the reader aspects? Yes, so I, um, one of my best sources for this book was her roommate from boarding school. She went to a very fancy, as you can imagine, boarding school in Connecticut. And her friend from boarding school was called Nancy Tuckerman. Yes. And she told me something which made sense to me, but which nobody had ever told, told me in person before, which was that when they were schoolgirls, Jackie was unlike the rest of the girls who would be off gossiping or playing cards or in somebody's room, you know, sneaking a cigarette, Jackie would be back in her, her room by herself reading a book. <laughs> And um, that was one of Nancy's strongest recollections of her when uh, they were schoolgirls, so before the age of 18. Um, so, you know, I think a lot of us who our readers ourselves, our reading starts early. Yes. And uh, we find our identity oftentimes through books. And I think that was true of, I think that was true of her too. Um, that's where her, her identity as a reader began. And oftentimes, you know, even in the period when she was very busy at the White House, You see her going up and down uh, steps of planes or arriving various places, and she's always got a book under <laughs> under her arm. So I think that carried on into her adult life. Uh, the title of your book is Reading Jackie, Leyendo a Jackie in Spanish. I would I would dare to add maybe reading Jackie reading, because this is her reading. And as you have said, books shape us. Can you tell us a couple of titles that you think shaped her as a future uh, person she would be? I, I don't know as many of the titles that she worked, I mean, that she read um, when she was a child that, you know, that formed her adult self. Um, but I do know um, the kinds of books she chose to work on when she was an editor. And I think those books that she, she chose to work on as an editor reflect her tastes and reflect on the person who deeply she was. Um, 
And I think this is an instinct that all of us have. If you meet somebody for the first time, maybe you go to their house for a coffee or a drink or something like that. They go into the kitchen to make you like a drink and you go over to their bookshelves <laughs> to just kind of go along their bookshelves to see what have they got? What have they read? What, what is this person like? So that's the, um, the idea behind my book. You asked for some specific, um, some specific titles. Um, there is one which I think is very revealing, which is called Allure. Um, yes. And I don't know how that would be translated in, in Spanish, but it, in some ways it's difficult to translate even in, in English because yes. it's just really about female attractiveness. What makes a woman beautiful? And um, she worked, uh, collaborated with the famous editor of Vogue on this book, Diana Vreeland. Um, and it's really not just a book about dresses and makeup or jewelry or, or things like that. It's about this kind of indefinable essence that, you know, that makes for attractiveness. And um, Diana Vreeland wanted to feature in this book two women who were in some ways painfully present in Jackie's own autobiography. And one was the, um, the Hollywood star, Marilyn, Mor Marilyn uh, Monroe, who, with whom her husband, JFK, had had an affair. And the other was Maria Callas, yes. with whom Onassis had an ongoing affair even after he was married to, to Jackie. And I think that um, what that book teaches us about who she was is that she so believed in this idea of an essence of female beauty that was beyond dresses and clothing, that was somehow um, about uh, the, way, the way a woman presents herself and her soul, that she was ready to rise above her own history with these women, which was not so nice. And let her author sort of say, yes, Marilyn Monroe had it. She had a lure. Maria Callas had it. She had a lure. <laughs> I was thinking that uh, when we go to people's houses, well, when we usually went to people's houses <laughs> before the pandemic. Before the, before the pandemic. <laughs> you usually look, you know, at um, pictures on walls or maybe even what is it that they keep in the refrigerator? Yes, that's another, but, one. <laughs> yeah, that's another one. Um I always look at the bookshelves to yeah. see to see what the personality that, that lives there looks like through the books. Right. Um this is an almost secret aspect of Jackie, but there is a more secret one, I guess, which is the writer. She wrote um some things she wanted to be published but most of them i guess she didn't and and i would think if you agree with me and you're you're the expert of course that jackie the writer is between the reader and the publisher she also tried to write is this correct that is that's that is correct and you know, she, she did do some writing, and it's possible to look at her writing. She wrote a piece on the, on the International Center for Photography in New York for a big magazine in, in the States, The New Yorker. Um, she wrote introductions for some of, her, some of her books. She wrote an introduction for that book with Diana Vreeland called Allure. Um, she wrote an introduction for a book on Michael Jackson, which I think she was kind of unwilling to write, but she wrote it nonetheless. She wrote it nonetheless. And, you know, I've also seen some of her letters, some of her private letters, and she had a way with words. There was a kind of a mischief about her, a kind of a sense of fun that, you know, even in the shortest thank you note, she'll think of some way of putting in a kind of a barbed, reply where you know she makes fun of herself or she makes fun of the person she's writing to and you can tell that um she had talent as a writer and if there's anything that um that i regret about her it's that somebody didn't tell her look jackie you've got this talent you should be writing more 
um, and my secret theory about that is that all good writing is a kind of self-exposure. Um, you've got to tell the truth in good writing. And she was so into protecting her privacy, which we can understand given that she, she had an excess of attention to her life. But I think she was so into sort of protecting her privacy that she didn't allow herself to publish more. Um, and uh, she, for example, she did a book on Fred Astaire, who was the most elegant, the most graceful person moving through space um, in the 20th century in America. And it would have been wonderful for her to write a, a forward to that book about, this is what I remember about Fred Astaire. Um, but she didn't. Perhaps she needed a, a Jackie herself to encourage her to publish or or not because as you say uh the publisher is is an invisible person and it should be in in many aspects yeah you have to let the book live that's right that's right and i think she was suspicious even of people in publishing who she might have trusted that they were making you know, that they wanted to make a buck off of her they wanted to make money off of her um and certainly a book like this would have made money but one of her colleagues, a man who, with whom she was fairly close at Doubleday, which was the publisher where she worked at the end of her life, said it would be really wonderful, Jackie, if you did your memoirs. And she just said, I, you know, I want to walk down the beach. I don't want to sit in front of a typewriter. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> um, well, you mentioned Doubleday. Before Doubleday, there was Viking. Um, can you tell us a little bit, these are no, no little publishing houses. These are very, very important publishing houses. Can you tell us a little bit about her trajectory from Viking to Doubleday and how that was? Yes, that's, that's a very interesting trajectory and it's a very good question. Um, she went to Viking because she knew um, the president of, uh, of Viking. He was an old, he was an old friend of hers. And she told him a little bit about her ambition to be an editor. And he said, I think, you know, this is a great idea because it will be wonderful publicity for the house. Um, and, you know, they were able to strike a bargain on, on that. Unfortunately, Viking had a long standing contract with, uh, a uh, famous British writer of thrillers called Jeffrey Archer. And oh, Jeffrey yeah. Archer, during the time that um, Jackie was at Viking, produced a book which imagined the assassination of Ted Kennedy, who was still very much alive. So it was kind of in bad taste. <laughs> at the, yeah. the best description is that it's pretty bad taste. And... Jackie knew about it. She knew it was a commercial proposition, and so she just didn't get up, get in the way of it. But a reviewer for the New York Times said, anyone who had anything to do with this book should be ashamed of herself. That is sort of laying, laying at Jackie's feet. You're responsible for this. You should have stopped it. And she didn't. Um, and at that point, she resigned. Um, and, you know, this was kind of an interesting opportunity for her because she's done a few years at Viking. She knew she liked it. So she wanted to go to another publishing house. And uh, so she asked a friend of hers to take her around to some art house publishers, you know, people who featured big, big kind of what were called coffee table books that were small circulation um, on photographers and artists and people like that. She would have loved that kind of thing. But um, this man introduced her to a number of places which would have been happy to hire her. But in the end, she said, no, I'm not going to do that. She went to another big publisher. And the reason why she went to Doubleday was that her best friend from boarding school again, who I've mentioned, Nancy Tuckerman, was already at Doubleday working for um, one of the founders of the company, Nelson Doubleday. And so she had some inbuilt protection at, um, at Doubleday. She had somebody 
who could kind of, you know, keep her ear to the ground and let her know what was going on so that the Viking scenario never happened again. So she ended up going to this other big publisher, which did not really publish the kind of books that she liked to do, um, but uh, where she had, you know, some people there who knew her who could protect her. And so that's why, that's why I think she went to Doubleday. Um, Mr. Kuhn, as you know, time is a tyrant. Uh, <laughs> I guess uh, we have time for one more question. And this is a hard one, I think, for you, not for me. <laughs> if you had to choose one of the books she published that would define her as a publisher, as a reader, of course, and as a person, which book would that be? And tell us a little bit about, a little bit about that book you would choose. The one I would choose is the book that um, she did she did with Bill Moyers called The Power of Myth. And um, Bill Moyers in the States is very well known as a kind of a, he had an interview program in which he would kind of interview news figures from the week. Um, but later in life, he also uh, interviewed um, Uh, other people who'd written, intellectual people who'd, who'd written books. And Moyers managed to interview a very prominent historian of religion. And um, this book is how ordinary human beings are sometimes raised to godlike proportions. You know, how a celebrity becomes something which is almost sacred. And how in a period when, you know, in, uh, in the Americas, in the West, generally um, religion has been declining, but the religious impulse is still very strong and the desire to worship an idol is still very strong. And Bill, uh, Bill Moyers in this book essentially pointed to Jackie's own experience and said, What happened at the funeral of JFK? What happened when she had her husband killed next to her essentially transformed her overnight into a kind of a goddess. And knowing that she did this book, knowing that she chose it, Bill Moyers didn't come to her with the book. She went to him because she'd seen the television interviews and said, I want to do that as a book. It's an extraordinary telling of what her life was transformed into after 1963, after the murder of her husband. And I was frankly astonished that she would want to give it that kind of autobiographical stamp. And yet she was the editor and she appeared with Moyers at a book party Um, she was very proud of that book. It sold very well, not so much because people knew about Jackie's connection with it, but because it kind of touched a nerve um, and because uh, I think people are, are still interested in the history of spirituality, even if it may not necessarily be uh, conventional spirituality of the church. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, thank you. Thank you very much for, for this interview. I think in very broad strokes, we get the idea of who Jackie, the publisher, was. Of course, I recommend people to read the book because then we'll go into detail uh, about this wonderful person who, um, who, chose, who chose to work for others as a publisher, as a publisher. And uh, thank you very much for the interview and for the book, Reading Jackie, Leyendo a Jackie, Mr. William. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure speaking to you. Yo les recuerdo que la revista Lee Más está a la venta en todas las sucursales de la librería Gandhi. Y ahí también pueden encontrar Leyendo a Jackie, el libro de William Kuhn sobre Jackie 
Kennedy, Jackie Onassis, como editora y como lectora, editado por Camelot. Thank you very much, and we hope to see you soon in Mexico. I would, I would love to see you in Mexico, especially where you are now. <laughs> okay. Oh, yes. <laughs> You're very welcome.